Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Audacity with PS. My name is Jumaka Shotawa, aka Benefit Girl, aka Top Tier 1%. I'm a fashion entrepreneur and also a PR professional. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode of Audacity with BS. Welcome once again. First of all, I really want to say thank you to Pastor Shola Kodwa, my father, our apostle, for this opportunity to share, you know, today's session with everyone with the new global. You know, um, it's a rare privilege and I'm really excited and, and I really appreciate this. You know, it's so right about now, I want you also you know, take the link, share it on all your social media platforms, all your WhatsApp groups. You know, I know we are like in 1 million and 25 WhatsApp groups, you know, share it there. Let everyone join this session. It's something that will actually really bless you. It's something that you really want to hear. It's something that you really, really, really need at this point in time, especially after you know, the next conference where we're saying, okay, let's go out and legislate, right? Um, so put it on your WhatsApp stories, put it on your Instagram stories, put it on your Twitter pages, put it on your, anywhere there are people, TikTok, anywhere there are people, put this link out there because everyone needs to benefit from this, all right? So this beautiful Monday morning, we're talking about succeeding in personal branding and effective communication. Did you guess that right? Maybe not, all right? Um, What's personal branding? Why do we need personal branding? Why do you think it's important to brand yourself? You know, um, do you think personal branding can actually help you achieve success in life? I'm going to talk about that in this session today. Just sit back, relax, get your journals out, get your journals out, listen intently because this will bless you. All right. So the scripture I really love so much. I came across this scripture while I, as, uh, while I was a student at um, about family at Willow University. And when I saw the scripture, I was blown away. And I'm going to share it with you all. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. I'm going to read from the NLT translation. It says, Wear fine clothes with a splash of cologne. I'm sure some of you have never seen this kind of scripture, you know, in, the, in your Bible before. I'm sure you're like, ah uh-uh. ah. So the Bible is saying we should wear fine clothes. Yes, because it's important. God wants you to look good. God you know, want you to um, show up in the world looking like the king and the queen and the priest that you are, all right? So it's important that you pay attention to how you show up to the world. It's important you pay attention to how you are being perceived, right? And let me say this here. Showing up to the world, you know, wearing fine clothes or looking good or showing up as your best self is really not the goal, right? That's really not the goal. The goal is to be who God has called you to be. That's what this is about, right? There are different ways and different approaches to personal branding. I'm sure if you go online, you can see different tips, you know, different tricks on how you can brand yourself, how you can be perceived right. But I'm going to share something different today, something that is long-lasting, something that you would um, look 10 years down the line and you'd be glad you actually decided to pay attention to your personal branding. So what's personal branding? Personal branding is the process of developing or creating a reputation of yourself as an individual. You're a person, you have a personal brand, right? Everyone has a personal brand. And personal branding is for everyone, whether you like it or not, right? Whether you know it or not, you are creating an impression of yourself. You are being perceived in a way. And what are the ways that, um, what informs, you know, your personal brand? There are three things. Number one, what you say. Number two, what you do. Number three, how you do the things you do. These are the things that inform how you're being perceived by the world, right? How do you show up to the world? How do you wake up every day? How do you relate uh, relate with people around you? You you meet people every single day, right? How uh, how are you um, portraying yourself? How are you showing up? These are the things we need to talk about. We need to be intentional about how we show up to the world. We're talking about legislating. We are saying we're the top tier 1% of our industry. Right? The top tier 1% of your industry will not just show up anyhow, right? They will not just do things anyhow. There's, there are different things, there are things, there are pointers that you need to pay attention to to build your personal brand. Like I said, whether you know it or not, you have a personal brand. Are you aware of it? Do you know about it? That's another conversation, right? So, this other city of PS is actually talking about personal branding so that you can be successful. So you can achieve the things you want to achieve, right? The Bible talks about man in the beginning, how God created man and gave man dominion. Going to the world, right? He gave us dominion. He blessed man. 
We are supposed to dominate. We are supposed to be fruitful. We are supposed to multiply. He has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. God did not make any man empty, right? There's something about you, but you need to be aware of it. You need to know what that thing is. You need to be conscious of who you are, what you carry for your world, and show up as that person, right? There are different ways you can, you know, brand yourself, like I've said. You know, people say, oh, what you wear, oh, you know, branding, talk about logo, talk about this, talk about that. Yes, that's part of it, but that's not the core, right? I'm here to talk to you about the core. I'm here to talk to you about the core, how you show up and you show up as your real self, how you show up and show up as your authentic self, how you show up and show up as who God has created you to be, right? You need to be that person. You need to show up to your world as that person. No more playing soon. No more living, you know, be knowing your God-given potential, right? No more underestimating yourself. You need to show up as who God has called you to be, who God has made you to be on the earth. You have a purpose. You have a plan. You have, God has a plan for your life. You have a purpose. You have an assignment on the earth. But you need to find that out, right? If you don't know that, you're going to live your life anyway and anyhow. For example, imagine I'm going to the UK, for example, right? And I don't even know where I'm going to. What do I do? I don't know what airport to go to. Instead of going to the international airport, I might just end up at MMA2 because I don't even know where I'm going to, right? Or I don't even know what terminal to go through. You know, I'm not going to be a confused person just going around in circles, you know, just doing things the way I think I should do them because I don't have a direction for my life. Because I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know who I am. I don't know where I'm going to. But today's session, today's episode is to help you know who you are, help you know how to now position yourself for success in life. As a person, you need to build a likeliness for yourself so you can achieve the things God wants for you, right? The Bible says God looks at the heart. But man looks at the outward appearance. It's very, very critical. If you're on this world, if you're in this world, right? If you're in this world, there's a way you must be. There's a way you must position yourself. There's a way you must set yourself for success, right? And it's very critical. So there are two approaches in building a personal brand, right? Um, there is the outward approach and then, then there is the inward approach. The outward approach is very, very shallow, right? It will not last long. It will not last the test of time right it's inauthentic it's not the real you this approach focuses on what you wear you know the kind of car you drive you know the kind of house you live in you know the kind of people you hang around with it's very very fickle it's external right it will not last the test of time trust me right the second approach is the inward approach this is very authentic you will show up as your real self right but there's work to be done right it will last the test of time right? You're going to show up any day, anytime as yourself. That's what personal branding is about. What is really personal branding, right? It is what people see about you when you're in the room. When you interact with people, what impressions you leave on the hearts of people, right? How do you make people feel? What do you say? How do you say the things that you say, right? It's not really about, oh, I intended to. You might intend to, but you're not doing it the right way, right? So it's very important and critical that we pay attention to things like this. Because like I said earlier, 10 years down the line, you've been grateful. You've been grateful that you actually paid attention to yourself, to your personal branding, to your perception, how you're being perceived, to your positioning. Because for you to legislate, for you to be the top tier 1% of your industry, of this world, right? For you to let your voice shine, let your voice be heard in your you know, generation. You need to pay attention to this. We need to really pay attention to this. This is what will stand you out of the crowd. Look at the Bible in Daniel chapter 1. The Bible talked, spoke about how they asked, go get me these kinds of men. Let's take a look at that scripture. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. All right. I'm going to read from the um, NLT translation. It says, select only strong, healthy, and good looking young men. He said, Make sure they are well versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good judgment, and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. You can see, select healthy young men. Like I said, the man looks at the outward, only God looks at the heart. So to succeed in life in, the, in this world, there are some things you need to do. There's a way you must position yourself. There's a way you must be perceived to be in the place God wants you to be right? We are, the, we are the finishing generation. 
We are the ones who will bring back, you know, and bring this kingdom from God until the kingdom of this world becomes the kingdom of our God. And God is counting on you. And there are things that you need to do, right? There are things you need to do. I know we say, oh, let's pray in tongues, right? Let's read our Bibles. It's very important. And that's why I'm talking about the inward, right? It's very important. However, there are other natural things that we also need to pay attention to, right? The Bible says Christ is both the wisdom and the power of God. There's a power dimension that is very you know, important and very critical. There's also a wisdom dimension that is very, very important. We're going to take a look at it. What are the ways to build a personal brand? There are things that we need to take into you know, cognizance when building a personal brand. Number one, have a vision for your life. Who are you? Who do you want to become? You need to sit down with yourself. Like P.S. would say, if nobody talks to me, I talk to myself, right? Sit down with yourself. How do I want to show up to my world? How do I want to be perceived? Who am I? Who do I want to become, right? What are your core values? For me, for example, one of my core values is respect. Because I want to be respected, I want to be a respectable woman, I must give respect to people. Whether you are my age mate, whether you are younger than me, whether you are older than me, I respect and honor people. That's a core value. And because that's a core value to me, I know how to show up to my world, right? So what are your core values? Write it down. Because if you don't know your core values, you're going to just live life anyhow. And that's not the kind of person God has created you to be. You are a royal priesthood, right? You are a king. You are a queen. So you must show up as that. But if you don't know that, how do you want to show up into your world? Like the illustration I gave earlier. If you don't know where you're going to, you're going to just do anyhow. You don't know the next turn to make. You know, the next, you know, thing to do. You can enter into anywhere. You're going to waste your time. You know, just, you're just going to live an ordinary life. So you must know who you are, who you want to become, right? Access yourself appropriately. Be real with yourself. This is not a, or what people think. Yes, people, there's a way people can think. There's, there, are, there, there are things people can, you know, think about you, right? But that's another that, um, um, story, right? We'll come to that. Or oh, who are you? What do you want to be known for? Write it down. And as you write it down, as you're real with yourself, and there are different things. You can say, oh, I want to be a Jagaban. People see, is, is that what you want to be known for? It's, it's okay, right? I want to be a Jagaban. What that means is, I'm going to live my life like a Jagaban. So how I walk, how I talk, how I, you know, relate with people. And that's fine. That's what you want to be known as. You want to be known as a very, you know, as a good mom, right? That's fine. You want to be known as someone who is kind. Someone who is loyal, someone who is resourceful, someone who is excellent. Write it down. What do I want to be known for? Those are the questions you need to answer for yourself. No one can do this for you. You need to answer it for yourself. This is the first step in building a personal brand, right? Know where you're going to. At the end of the day, I like asking myself this question. When my life is over, when God calls me home, what will people say about me? I want to be one, for example, like I've said, I want to be a multi influential woman. Someone who helps young people. Right? I love helping young people in their businesses. And if I see someone doing something that's really great, I'm like, let's go for it. I put it out there, right? I'm there cheering you on. I want to be that person who is there, who is a shoulder, you know, to lean on. I can always, you know, um, cheer you on. I'm your um, hype woman, right? That's who I want to be known as. I want to be an excellent woman. Everything I do is excellent. So who do you want to be known as? Who do you want to become? Not just the goals you want to achieve in life, but really, really, truly, truly, who are you? Who do you want to become? And when you write all of these down, write the words. Make sure you write it down on paper, right? Make the vision and write the vision. Make it plain on paper. So he who reads it can run with it. So you, when you read it again, because you can't forget. You can see somebody else's one and say, that's what you want to be. No. It's a personal thing. Write it down. And once you're done writing these things down, right, allow yourself to become that person. Give yourself that opportunity. Give yourself the permission to be that person because that's who you are. If you don't have a vision for your life, ask God about it. Pray to God. Ask God. Say, God, show me, me. Reveal me to me. God will show you. There's a scripture about your life. And if you don't know it by now, search the scriptures. Just like Jesus. He, he, there's a scripture about his life and he found it, right? He said, I've come in the volume of books that have been written about me. There is something written about you. 
You need to know that. And once you know that, once you know what you're called to do on the earth, once you know what your purpose is, then you can begin to, you know, tailor your life in that direction. But until you find that, you're going to be doing other things. You're going to be very shallow. You're going to be going around in circles and not really, really building after the pattern of God for your life, right? So it's important you know what God has said about you. For me, for example, Proverbs 31 is my scripture, scripture for my life. The Proverbs there's one woman. You know, whenever I read that scripture, I get fired up. I get stirred up. That's why when I go, go through seasons of life, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm sure most of you already know things I do, right? I'm, I, I know that I can do this because this is what I've been reading about me. This is what I know. The Bible says before I formed you, I knew you and I ordained you prophet to the nations, right? So there's something I've been reading about you. Find that out. And if you knew that already, fantastic glory to God, right? Remind yourself again and give yourself the permission to be that person. Number two, find yourself and discover your uniqueness. Guys, this is a game changer, trust me, right? It's going to literally change your life. When you understand yourself, you know, a lot of times that people just live life very casually. People live life without even taking time. You know, it happens to be something I like to do. It's called mindfulness. Be mindful, right? Discover yourself. Know your strength. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Identify it. Write it down, right? What are your strengths? What are the things you're very good at? What comes to you naturally? Because once you know that, you're able to begin to position yourself as that, right? There's no point trying to um, work on your weaknesses as in where, you know, when you already have things that you can just improve on, your strength. You can just write on your strength. That's what works for me as a person. I mean, my friend, friends know this about me. I'm very, very confident in my strength. I don't even try to even, like, I don't try to hide it. I know my strength. And I just write on that. So discover your strength. Discover what makes you different, what makes you stand out, right? God has not made you ordinary. There's something about you, right? There's something about you. There's something about you. Find that out. What, what is that thing? What, what comes to you naturally? Ask yourself those questions. What do people actually know you for, right? What do people actually, you know, um, um, identify you with? What comes naturally to you? There are things that you need to ask yourself. That's how you know and discover your strength. It's very important that you find your strength. It's very important that you find what is really unique to you, what your uniqueness is, right? God has not created you empty. There's something about you. There's something that stands you out from the rest. Yes, you might be similar to someone, but there's no two of you, right? There's no two Jumoke. There's no two you, right? There's something that distinguishes you from the crowd. Find that thing out, right? And play to your strength. Don't play to your weaknesses. Right, your place more than serve the world. Don't be afraid to shine. Don't be afraid to, you know, display your strength to your world. That's who you are. That's who God has created you to be. Find that thing out and, you know, be that person. Find that thing out and be that person. You know, it's very, very critical for personal branding. Like I said, it's from inside out, right? So once you have a vision for your life, you know who God has called you to be. You know where you want to go through. You know what direction God is telling you to go through, right? You know what God has called you, who God has called you, that's number one. Number two, then you find your uniqueness. What problems do you solve naturally, right? Um, what problems people come to you with and you give a solution naturally? That's what makes you unique. That's what makes, makes you different. Find that thing out, right? And then begin to be that person. Don't be afraid to share your strength to the world. So number three, you then begin to invest in yourself, right? now have a vision for your life, then now you've, you know, found out what is unique about you, you found out what sets you apart, then begin to invest in yourself. Read books, go for conferences, go for seminars, you know, invest in your outward appearance. Remember the scripture I read in the beginning? Wear fine clothes with a splash of cologne. Be intentional about how you show up to your world. That's how people take you seriously, right? If you want to be known as a mom, you want to be known as an interior um, um, decorator. You want to be known as whatever, as a creative, as a fashion entrepreneur, as a media person, as an architect, as a real estate, whatever you want to be known as, as a politician, show up as that. Give yourself the permission to be that person, right? Invest in yourself, invest in knowledge. There are two things that also, you know, um, give people an impression about you. 
your skill and your character. Now for skill, how do you um, gain skill? It's by knowledge, right? Once you gain knowledge, then you begin to apply that knowledge. Then you, be, you see that you're, you begin to, um, you're skillful, right? You, be, you, 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 you are now skilled, right? So your knowledge, once you've gained knowledge, then you can now say, oh, I'm skilled when you apply that knowledge. Number two, your character, right? So you begin to invest in those things. How do you relate with people? How do you talk, right? How do you show up to the people around you? Remember, everyone has a personal brand. You have a personal brand. Every day you're relating with people. Every day you're meeting people. Every day you're showing up, you're doing business. How are you being perceived? Begin to invest in yourself, right? If you need to learn how to speak, there are so many, you know, materials, resources online. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. I'm seeing it like five more. Like, don't be lazy, right? Don't be lazy, right? Um, take the time. Be disciplined. Read books. It's something that, I mean, go for training. There's something that I, I do. I have this app called BBC. BBC News on my phone. You can the latest news so that when you speak to people, when you meet people, when you introduce yourself to people, you are current, right? You know what's going on. You're not shallow. You're not dull because you're not going to represent God that way. Remember what I said about Daniel? The smartest people, the strong people, the good looking people, invest in yourself. That way you can show up confidently to your world. That way you can legislate, right? That is what you need to do. It's not just about saying, oh, I'm the top tier 1%. It's not just about saying, oh, I legislate in my field. You get there. Are you going to actually, do you have what it takes to stay there, right? I mean, opportunities can come. What can be declared over you? You got favor. Your time, this is the time to favor Zion, right? And then you have an opportunity. But when you get that opportunity, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Have you built so much, you know, um, um, uh, um, value, are you a person of value? And when you get there, you're very resourceful, you're valuable. Invest in yourself, right? When it comes to um, your looks, invite critical. I'm going to give you some tips, just small tips, right? As a woman, there's some basic things that you should have in your wardrobe. And I'm going to list them out. Number one, basic. These are basic wardrobe essentials. You should have at least a white shirt, a button up shirt. You should have a black pants, tailored black pants. Number three, you should have at least a black heels, pumps. You should have black flat shoes. You should have a nice work handbag. These are things that you should have in your wardrobe. You should have a black blazer. So these are basics, like I said, and then you begin to build your wardrobe from there, right? Once you have these um, basic essentials, you head out, you step out, you step out looking sharp, looking good. You're going to be taken seriously, right? As a man, for example, there's some colors and things you should have. You should have a good pair of jeans. Have a good pair of shoes. Walk lace-up shoes. Have a pair of nice, clean, white sneakers, right? Have, you can have like a nice palm slippers. Have nice, you know, um, native, nicely sewn, nicely made neat, right? Shirt, nice white shirt. These are things you need to pay attention to. You know, even the patterns you wear, you know, the kind of fabric you wear, it says a lot about you, right? If you are someone who just wears anything and everything, you know, I, I just know, you know, okay, this is how this person is. But if you pay attention to the kind of patterns, the kind of colors, you know, let me give you a tip as well. Four lint makes you actually look expensive, right? Print, you can actually, if you're not, you know, very good with uh, identifying good print, you can look cheap with prints, right? To invest in good clothes, quality over quantity, right? It will last you. Trust me, once you spend some money buying good shoes, you can wear it for a longer time. And also, you will also um, imbibe and cultivate the habit of taking care of your things, right? It's not just about even buying those things. Yes, you can buy them, but if you don't take care of them well, if you don't handle them properly, you wear your white sneakers, for example, you don't clean it afterwards. By the time you're wearing it again, you can, it looks funny, and then you're looking for new shoes. You know, invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. It shows you even love yourself. It shows you're serious about, you know, legislating. Invest in yourself, right? 
that way you can begin to build your personal brand. So number four, deliberately communicate. Now, this is where a lot of us might falter, right? I'm sure some of you might have said, okay, I have a vision for my life. Oh, I know my strength. I know my uniqueness. Oh yeah, I invest in myself. But do you communicate effectively? Are you deliberate about communicating your values? Are you deliberate about communicating, you know, who you are to your world? Right? You need to, I mean, there are people you've been sent to. You have an audience, right? You have a message. Are you communicating that message properly and effectively? Are you deliberate about it? Right? I'm sure some of you have seen my Instagram post recently. I'm, I'm very intentional, right? I'm very, very, because God has called me to be influential. And this influence is for his kingdom. So I must be intentional in reaching my audience. There's a, there, are, there, there, there is a people, there are people God has sent me to, and I know those people. So I will do all I can to communicate so I reach those people, right? So you must communicate that value. You must communicate that value to your people, right? Communication is very, very critical. You have a fundamental responsibility to communicate your value to your world. It's very, very critical. It's very, very, very critical. Not, especially at a time like this, where we are saying we are legislating, right? The Bible talks about the end time transfer of wealth. You know, opportunities can only come when people know what you do. There are people right here listening to me, your friends, your church members, your co- people don't even know what you do. So I don't even know the opportunities to even bring your way. You're not communicating your value well enough. There are different social media platforms you can communicate your value, right? If you're not communicating your value, if you're not communicating, what you are doing is you're shutting yourself out from the world. That's what you are doing, right? You are cut, sh- cutting yourself out. You're shutting yourself out from the world. Nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows what you can do. Nobody knows, you know, what you are about. Nobody knows what your value is. So you must spend time. You must be deliberate about communicating. Those values you've written out in the beginning, right? You have a message. Begin to communicate it. It's very, very in, in, um, important. And it's critical that we do that in such a time as this, right? Now, how do you do this? There are different social media platforms, right? If you want to be seen as a you know, career professional, there's LinkedIn. Begin to put out what you know. There are things you know that people don't know. Begin to share those things. There, you know something. Trust me. There's something you know. Begin to communicate that thing, right? There's something you know. Don't think you don't know anything. There's something you know. Because if you feel like you don't know anything, that's even pride. That's a waste of God's resources over your life. That's a waste of God's investment over your life. It means you are proud, right? But you're something you know. Begin to communicate that thing that you know. You can pick two different platforms that you want to share and communicate, you know, your values to the world. You can say, oh, I want to communicate on Instagram and YouTube. Right? And let me give you a tip here. Pick a platform that is engaging, right? Number one. And pick a platform that is um, educative, right? So you can say, oh, I want to choose Twitter where I can talk about some things and I want to get high engagement on Instagram. You can say, oh, I want to choose TikTok, you know, and Facebook. Just listen, start with two platforms. Identify it. What do I want to do? What, what's my message? We already identified that, right? You already identify your message, who you are. Now, where can I share that message to, right? Then be deliberate about it. Have a schedule, you know, um, be intentional. Be intentional about communicating your value to your world. That's how you build a personal brand. That's how you are being perceived, right? There's a way you are perceived, right? We just spoke about your uniqueness. So you know who you are, you know what you carry. But you know, there are people who need to also perceive that thing about you. And how do they know that? Only God looks at the heart. You need to begin to communicate it, right? Be intentional about communicating those values and who you are to your world. All right, so number five, right? This is the last one. It's be consistent. Remember what I said in the beginning? It's not really about the outward appearance. It's not about what I put on social media. It's not about what I say here. It's actually who you are on the inside. So you must be consistent. You must show up consistently, right? Consistently constant. When I meet you today, I meet you tomorrow. I want to also see the same you that I've always known. Be consistent, right? Oh, I'm a joy giver. Then give joy. And we call yourself Jesus baby. Don't be a Jesus baby. Don't be, don't say, put on your bio, Jesus baby. And when I see you, you're not looking like Jesus baby. You're looking like child of the world. 
all right? Be consistent. Show up consistently, all right? Show up consistently. Show up consistently. You know, um, how you communicate to people today, tomorrow, in, you know, in your business, in your workplace, in church. Be consistent. Be the same person. Be authentic. Be authentic. Be the real you, right? The world actually needs you. The world needs you. The world needs you. There is, a, there, is, there is something that you're supposed to be showing us and giving us, right? If you don't do that, then we are, we are missing out on that greatness that you are, all right? So you have to be consistent. That's how you build a personal brand. You're not today, oh, oh let's do this, let's get it done. And tomorrow you're like, oh, well, let me kill Jesus, you know? Be consistent. Be consistent. Show up consistently. If you want to be excellent, be excellent. If you want to be, you know, um, whatever you decide to be, just show up consistently. That's how we know, you know, that is who you are. That's how we perceive you. That's how we begin. Even if, see, and let me tell you, even if it's not popular today, but if you keep showing up as that, you know you as that, right? Is that what you want to be known as? That's who you want to be? They show up as that. And all of these things are very, very important that you pay attention to them because it gives you a leverage for success. You need to have a likeliness. There's something that we need to know about you so that when there are opportunities, we can say, oh, let me call Tola for this. Oh, let me call Miss Tola for this. Oh, let me call um, El Shaddai for this. You know, I know this is who you are. But if I don't know anything about you, I know you will show what you are, what you represent. I'm not going to say, I mean, I'm not going to take you seriously. All right. So these things are very, very, very important that we pay attention to them. All right. I'm going to leave you with three assignments that I want you to do. Right. I want you to, you know, take note of it as we go today. Number one, write down your three core strength. Your three core strength. Write it down. Right. Write it down. Number two, write out three words you want to be known for. Write it down. I want to be known as X, Y, Z, right? I want to be known as a preacher of the word. So once you write the things you want to be known for, you now know how to invest in those things, right? How you begin to pay attention to those things, right? There's a direction that you're going for. What do I want to be known for, right? I want to be known as a most influential woman. So I need to know what to do so that at the end of the day, I'm that person. Then number three, Look at the last five years of your life and think about what you would have done differently if you had the opportunity to relieve it. Yeah, think about it. The last five years of my life, what would I do differently if I had to relieve, you know, um, my decisions, things that I did? And who would I have become if I did the things that I did? I want you to you know, do this as you go along this week. Today, if possible, or this week, Ensure you write it down. Don't leave it as, you know, in your mind or in your head. Write it down. Once you write them, you are able to answer these questions, those three things. I bet you in the next few weeks, in the next few months, you're going to be the best version of yourself, right? I'm rooting for you. I love you. And I'm here saying, well done, dear legislator. So before we go, let's take our creed. I'm going to leave the right hand up. As sure as God helps me. I will not give up. I will not cave in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not die until my job is done and victory is won. I am the new and I love this church. I hope you learned something today. And before we go, please just put on the comment section what you learned today. I'd like to just hear from you. Um, have a lovely week ahead. God bless you. Bye.